Welcome back, YouTubers, to the second part of our convention episodes. We've got a lot of good convention stories, uh, and most of them are pretty embarrassing to us, so, so that should be us. fun. So yeah, stay tuned. So you mentioned you mentioned you want to talk to the creator. What are you wanting to say? Because I love so you. For instance, Can well, I have your children? Right. So you know, I go to these conventions and I meet people like you know Peter Cullen or, or whatnot, or you know like Bob Layton at the last uh, yeah, next to Comic Con, probably. and it was like I really like Iron Man. <laughs> you know, it's like what do you what do you say that they other than heard other already? yeah well because yeah I want to be the person who has a witty comment. But my witty comment is often just ends up being, thank you, I really like your work. Which I think is I think probably the right way to go. And if you have a witty comment, they've probably heard they've it probably like heard 50 it times yeah. and they're tired of it. Just like everyone dressed as Link, if you say, hey, listen, they're going to look at you and give you dagger eyes. <laughs> wow. Hey, look, listen. So, hey, mental hey, note, hey, don't out. be witty. Just be quiet. Just, just, yeah, don't say hum no, okay. Be humble. No. Okay, so you talking about feeling awkward. Like, there have been a couple of times where I've been just too awestruck. And the first time was meeting this man right here. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> but, so, a few... Oh, this is probably... Stan 20, Lee? 20, Excelsior! 20 years ago, I met Stan Lee. And that's not, not even the story I'm going to tell. I, I shook Stan Lee's hand. He was a great guy. He was um, actually kind of uh, funny, because he was flirting with the chick behind me. Hey, what's up, So, man? whatever. <laughs> John Byrne, who uh, everybody Stripper knows is like the bad boy of comic books. He's kind of a jerk. But Chris Claremont. So, Chris Claremont yeah. is, to me, X-Man. Like, that was my childhood, was Chris Claremont. I went up to Chris Claremont. Let me, let me see your hand. And I was like, "Sir, I just, I just wanted to shake your hand." It's sweating cold. And tell you that your X Men was my childhood. Like, if it wasn't for X Men, I don't know what see I was how babbling, this is? But I did not let go of his hand. And my brother's sitting right there taking the picture, and I'm like this, and we're making eye contact. And I don't want to let go because it's Chris Claremont. I'll never let go. I promise. And then I do this. <laughs> I don't know how to end it. I, I, like, I, he's not pulling away, so he, he's, he's, he's enjoying the moment, or he's just being polite. And I do that. I, or, and he was like, security. <laughs> so his, his other hand is reaching down for his taser. <laughs> so we the pure all, you know. Yeah. I pull back, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> See, so, and that, that's the thing for for me. So for most they're of used these to cons, that kind of stuff. Yeah, though. but like a lot of these cons that I've been to, I've been to plenty just as a con goer, but I've been to a lot as press or, you know, for work one way or another. And where I've been, like there was, I think it was Toy Fair, uh, which is, you know, isn't strictly a con, but like Jim Lee was just kind of just sitting there hanging out at the, I think the Mattel booth when they did those uh, Batman figures. And it was just kind of like, you know, kind of like sidling up to somebody at work, like, you know, how much longer do you have today? <laughs> you know, things like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, let's have a conversation like real people and just acknowledge that, you know, and that that was like my best conversation I've ever had with the creator. Just like, like when uh, Billy D. Williams was here in Lexington, like, I wanted to tell him in a very condensed version of all the Star Wars movies, like, you're the only black guy that me as a little black kid could look up to. And I appreciate you doing what you're doing, even though you didn't get any credit for blowing the Death Star. So I had to like, you know, condense that into thanks for like inspiring little black kids or something like that. But he was well, it's thanks like, for introducing, introducing me to Colt, Colt 45. 45. <laughs> yeah, I had him sign a Colt 45, and I had him sign one of those mighty mugs that looks like him. So <laughs> I don't claim you can have a better time with Colt 45 than without it. But why take chances? Uh, one of the very first events that happened in 2002 was the Wizard World Con. They had a VIP session mm -hmm. where you get to meet the creators. And it was kind of cool and kind of crazy because the creators, the people running the show and the guests had no... Or, I'm sorry, the uh, people attending the show had no idea what was going to happen. None of them. Like, all we knew was we were going to have dinner with creators, right? And there was, like, Alex Ross, Jim Lee, Andy Kubert. So I'll tell this story really quick. So I'm sitting there with Andy Cooper because a friend of mine that went was one of those assholes that brought in 100 comics. <laughs> and he leaves Andy Cooper to sign all these books. And Andy Cooper's like, I don't know. Like, wait, he's just, a nice guy. Simple, and, right? he, and it's a VIP event. So he's just sitting there. And I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you drew a lot of cool comic books when I was a kid. You want, it, me, you want me to sign some of those for you? I really and, like and it was comics. just And it was just, like, at the moment when I was coming back into comics, because I had taken, like, a 10-year break. So then Jim Lee walks up, and he starts talk, shooting shit with uh, Andy Kubert, right? And Andy Kubert's like, hey, man, dude, I love your Batman. That was the time that Jim yeah. Lee was drawing Batman. And he looks at Andy Kubert, and he's like, hey, dude, what's 1602 about? And it was the new Neil Gaiman yeah. project with Andy Cooper, and he's like, dude, I can't tell you that. <laughs> and Jim Lee's like, come on, man, it's Jim. <laughs> and, and Andy Cooper's like, are you serious? I'm like, I ain't saying shit. <laughs> like, you, you can tell him, I'm not even here with press. Um, but so was Joe Kubert was there. Joe Kubert with his other son, Adam. This is a family of artists. Joe Kubert has a school of art. Joe Kubert at this point was probably in his he's passed away now but he was probably 70s early 70s mm-hmm. and he used to draw a comic book called Sergeant Rock so my favorite moment was this guy had this amazing sketch pad of all these different artists like Jim Lee with Portacio Mark Silvestri all these guys and he wants a sketch of a different character of you know everybody draws a different sketch and he's like Mr. Kubert can you please draw me that's a great a, idea um, a sketch of somebody and Joe Kubert was like yeah sure son who do you want He's calling him son, but the guy's probably in his late 50s. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't know, uh, Ghost Rider. And he looks, like, Joe Kubert looks at his son, Adam. <laughs> he's like, Ghost Rider? He's like, you know, Dad, the guy with the flaming skull. And he's like, oh, yeah, that guy sucks. You're getting Sergeant Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me tell you my story about Sigeru Miyamoto. Because this is one, you know, I've met a bunch of these uh, famous Japanese developers. I've met Hideo Ke- Kojima of Metal Gear fame. I've met Tonobu Itagaki of Ninja Gaiden fame. Those are fun stories of like me like at these events and be like, hey, we can meet these guys and have drinks and stuff. Uh, Tetsuya Mitsukuchi who made uh, Rez and Children yeah. of Eden. Like, we hung out with this guy and therefore like, we would just see him like, hey, Rob, Mitsukuchi's on, have drinks and then do our thing. But, uh, and also uh, uh, Koji Ikarachi, uh, the guy who does Castlevania. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah so... Met him a whole bunch, had drinks with him. He was a lot of fun. Um, met Kenji Ino of D fame. Oh, yeah. He's a really cool guy. Rest his soul. But uh, my Sigur Miyamoto story, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Nintendo IP. I mean, I've named my child freaking Legend of Zelda Fox and Rosalina Fox. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to make, you know, the next child Star Fox 64 Fox. So I'm, <laughs> I'm all about, all about Miyamoto. So this is one of these E3s. I'm hanging out with my buddy Shane Bentonhausen, friend of the show. And like my goal, I brought my gold Zelda cartridge. This is a replica. <laughs> that is a flask. <laughs> <laughs> my gold Zelda cartridge is like, all right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get this thing signed. But like, this is back when the Wii was released, and like he was like interviews locked away, things like that. So day one, it was just like scoping where he'd be. Day two was like, maybe I can see him in the passing or not passing. And I was about to give up. And day three it was like, okay, this is the last AV3. And on the end of day two, I met someone named Gail Tilden, and she ran like PR or something for Nintendo Power. She's a very famous person, Nintendo. And like, you know, I'm a little kid, and I'm like, yeah, I really want to meet Miyamoto son, have him sign my gold Zelda with me. Because I've had like everywhere I went, yeah. I had my gold cartridge in this hand and my Sharpie in this hand. Gail was like, listen, if you come here at such and such time, early before, in day three, he'll be standing in this area. I will try and talk to him and have him come over. So I'm getting all pumped up and I'm standing in the Nintendo booth before the show starts. And like I'm seeing like, you know, these big people that I know. Reggie feels amazing, the guy who runs Nintendo. The late Satori Wata walks by me and oh, looks at me cool. and, and like he nods. And, and this is like, I knew exactly who it was. I was yeah. like, oh my God, it's Satori Wata-san. So he looked at me and he bowed respectfully and I bowed respectfully with him and I street passed him with my 3D. I was like, I have Iwata-san, what did you do? So that was really cool. And then Gail, she was, she signaled me. She's like, "Hey, he's down here. I'll, I'll take you down." So we go down to the area, and about ten feet away, there he is, like you know, m- the guy, Sigeru Miyamoto. And I'm literally like, again, I'm one of those guys where I don't get that nervous and excited around people. Like stars go to the bathroom just like I do every day. But this guy, I was like, kind of actually shaking, right? Right? It's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. So walk up to him, and he comes over, and like he looks at me. It's like, oh, and he sees my Zelda in my pen. And he walks over real calmly, smiling his face, and I said, Can you sign this for me, please? Don't worry, I got to sign must. And he like lights up and he signs it real nicely. And he says, like, you're welcome or whatever. And then I'm the guy with the camera that takes a picture. I was like, Do you mind if we take a picture together? And he's like, Hi, hi, sure, sure. So the cute Japanese chick that was with him comes by, takes a picture, and we're doing like this. 
and he was just so warm. Like his smile was his G. Like I'm sure he could tell. Like oh my god, this black guy is losing his freaking mind. He's so excited to see me. But like he was so genuine and like just happy that like you know he brought his name in a little triforce and that was it. So I was like, thank you very much. Shook his hand again and walked away. And I'm gonna tell you, ten feet away from that Nintendo booth. I was doing backflips. I seriously was doing backflips. So I, was, I called my wife, like, Fred! She was like, oh, you must have met me a mocha son. That's great. And I'm like, Gail, I'm like, Gail, hey, you made my childhood dreams come true. And she was like, always believe in your dreams. It was <laughs> the best E3 ever. Wow. That's really dramatic. <laughs> Mine is definitely not as dramatic as that. And I, I'm on par with you, Dan, because I just don't go to signings. I don't do anything. But at Dragon Con, which is kind of amazing, is the after hours. There are literally the people who are normally at the Walk of Hall of Fame. Uh, they're walking around in costume and everything. So one time, I, I think it was in Falco because I had really poor vision. I was walking <laughs> by and it was my first... Um, I guess Dragon Con with Falco, and it's kind of hard to walk around and see. And suddenly I hear, oh, that's nice. And I look over, and it's Grant Imahara, you know, dressed as a Walking Dead with his, you know, like baseball cool. bat walking past me. He's like, yeah, it's nice. And I was like, that's Grant Imahara. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. That's real cool. And then I was just like, it's Grant Imahara. And I was like, well, do you want to go back and get his autograph? And I was like, no, 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 I don't want to be that chick. No, you do. You should always be that chick. It was enough. It was enough. I was like, oh, that's great. And this is why I always take a camera with me wherever I go and someone to take pictures if I can't do it myself. I have long and, arms. I can know, take a selfie, it's but... it's funny, yeah, though, yeah. because I've seen two Mythbusters at Dragon Con just walking around the floor. One was Adam Savage dressed as um, Johnny Depp, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes, mm -hmm. And I spotted him. I was like, that looks like Adam Savage. And then later on, I was like, that that is Adam Savage from <laughs> Mythbusters. So... My final story um, before we wrap up is um, one thing that breaks the tension <laughs> is alcohol. So these guys, when they come to conventions or when you go to a convention, your mileage may vary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is true. So uh, there was a uh, you know each convention is usually at a hotel or near a hotel. And a lot of the uh, guests and stars go and hang out at the bars, right? <laughs> so that's what I was expecting. Um, and I was already drunk by the time I went down to this party. This is when we were doing About Heroes, our yeah. show. And I got a press pass. And, you know, I had already talked to some of these creators. But I didn't get any, like, personal, so what, like, yeah. hey, it was good to see you, blah, blah, blah. So I go in to a, to a bar. And I'm with a friend of mine. And I, and these guys, these group of guys that are sitting there. It's Joe Quesada, like, Paul Jenkins, Andy Kubert's playing pool with Adam Kubert, uh, Richard Esenov, and uh, Lane Wayne is there. Lane Wayne is the creator of Wolverine. Okay? So they're all sitting down at the bar and just drinking. And they're sitting on a stool and I see there's a spot open. Right? And they're like, <laughs> Lane Wayne had just finished getting like, he was telling a joke and I just literally, it, I did the asshole move of like, I came in with a beer going, everybody's laughing. I'm like, ha 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 I'm looking at them. They don't stop laughing. They don't miss a beat. And then I'm like, oh man. How's it going, guys? <laughs> and I just start talking. You have made everything that I love. Paul Jenkins like was drunk out of his mind. I'm like, and we just start talking. Andy, Andy, and uh, John Romita Jr. That was the other guy that was there. He's having a beer, and I'm like, oh, come on in here, John. Join us. But the best part is like I was making my buddy go buy the beers because I wasn't gonna buy any money. So I was like, hey, man, go buy them some beers. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll go buy the beers. <laughs> So I took advantage of this because I also had this with me. And this is Origin, the Wolverine Origin, right? So as these guys are sitting there, like, I'm surprised this doesn't have any dick pictures on it. <laughs> or there's just beer all... Well, like, not swearing. all of them were drunk, but I got Lane Wayne, you know, Paul Jenkins, Joe Quesada, Andy, Andy Cooper, Richard Razanov, like, all these guys that worked on this and the creator of Wolverine decided this for me. That's amazing. And, you know, we were just, you know, shooting the shit. It was really cool. That's, that's cool. Like, there's a... Uh, some of these comic conventions, there's a horror com comic convention that is a horror convention that is in Lexington. Oh, yeah. And one of the best times, that, what is it called? Ghost? No, whatever. And one of the best times to like meet these people, like actual Freddy Krueger or whatever, is like, after yeah. after everything's yeah. done and going to bars and stuff. It's always but fun then that, you kind of draw the line between stalker and <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those were our best convention stories. What are some of yours? Because we really want to know. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe and like and comment down below with your convention stories. I mean, you've heard some of ours, and some of them were pretty embarrassing, so it can't be any worse than that. So, let's just tell a few stories here. 
I've been all, like, I've met a lot of celebrities and comic book creators and stuff just you're doing this stuff. Me? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bragging at all. I met a bunch of comic book creators, really. <laughs> Have you seen these guys?